Tarantula Rijos, oh yeah. <música> the end of the video because I have a really cool fact that I bet a lot of people don't know about little cattle wagons. What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the keep and today we're gonna have a really cool tarantula rehouse. Also I'm very excited because I got some really cool mail that I was waiting for about 10 days something like that coming straight up from London so let's jump into this one first and see what is it. Let's just Nice. So, I know what it is, and this is something every keeper should have. Oh, I bet you guessed that right now, right? How cool is this? Shout out to Keeper Guards for this amazing oil. It's so wrapped, so cool, man. I don't even want to rip it off. But I will, because I want to see what's inside. Oh, look at that. Big shout out to Keeper's Cards, man. That's awesome. Okay. There we go. Now, let's see what we have here. If you're a keeper, beginner, or, or at any level, you should be getting these because they're very well explained, amazing pictures, just an awesome job. Now, about today's video, we're gonna talk about the Tocatl Vagans. Yeah, I know, the name is a bit tricky, so I'm gonna try to give you a hand with this. So the pronunciation goes like this. T Lil To Cat L Vagans. I'm gonna re I'm gonna repeat it again. T lil to cat l vagans, which means black spider in in Maya language or in Nahuatl. Mexican words, and I don't mean Spanish or Mexican Spanish. They tend to be very tricky, even for us. Some people can pronounce them correct correctly, like my English word. <laughs> but for further reference, I'm gonna refer. To these species as tea wagons. So what do we know about tea wagons? Tea wagons is a new world species of tarantula. It's a polar bear species of tarantula endemic to Mexico, uh, found in the Yucatan Peninsula, but can also be found in the um, border area of Belize and Guatemala since they are right there. It's a medium to fast growing um, grow rate tarantula. I got mine as a sling. She was no more than one centimeter um, in size. And I got her about a year ago and she put up some signs since there. I believe she's about two inches now, but I'll get a better measure in the next mold. And I'm gonna fish her out now because I want to show you. And well, these videos are rehouse videos, so she's gonna have to go out anyway. Let's have my touch cup ready here. Substrate is a, it's a bit it's a bit too moist, and the ventilation wasn't good in here. That's one of the reasons why I'm gonna rehouse her. I think I have her I have her pinned down. Yes, I can see legs in here, but you can see them too. Really doesn't, doesn't want to come out. She's holding really tight. Here we go. More hairs, hairs, and hairs, and hairs. What am 
want to fix the lighting here. And as it's becoming tradition in these videos, I am gonna hold her, but only for a bit, and just because, well, she's a slim. Well, sorry, she's a juvenile. I know she won't bite me, and that's the only reason why I'm doing it. She's kicking a lot of hers, and that's gonna be very itchy, I know. Here we are. So now we get rid of the old enclosure. Look how cute she is. Commonly known as Red Rum Tarantula. And I've heard some people call her the evil Brachypelma when she was known as Brachypelma, uh, Brachypelma right? I'll have to see, she, like you saw, she tends to kick hairs, but I never had any thread posture or anything from her. Maybe just because she's, uh, she's too small. I will, I will have to wait and see until she gets bigger. The place she's, where she comes from has an average 20 to 30, 30 uh, excuse me, 20 to 30 degree uh, Celsius, um, day and nights. And I keep her, I keep mine between 20 and 25, like most of my other tarantulas, day and night as well. They don't require the uh, human environment, although they come from the jungle. They seem to thrive in a, in, in a drier environment. They, they also like a drier, a drier substrate. So a good mist on a, on, a, on a side of the enclosure every time you feed her should be enough. I currently feed mine twice a week. Uh, if I don't get a, a big enough prey. But if I have a, I don't know, say a four, a four size cricket, I will feed her only once a week and I will do so until she gets her booty big enough or until she starts refusing the food and then I will leave her be because that means, as you know, pre mold Now to the actual rehouse, so I'm gonna have to lock her down so she doesn't move from there. and. I have this enclosure, CD enclosure, five inch by five inch square that I have it ready. I'm just gonna add some texture to it. We have some, I have a mix of sphagnum moss and orchid bark and in here. So I'm just gonna add a bit of that. I also have these dry leaves from my palm that I have in my terrace. I'm gonna add that here too. And I also also have this plant, this piece of plant that I'm just gonna put it out in here, dig in here, and see if she likes that. If not, I can always take it off later on. Next 
extra. There we go, we're good to go. Quick to, quick to come to my hand, but also she's quick to leave my hand now. Oh no, you refuse. Let's help her out, help you find the way. Yeah. that she is liking him getting closer now. She went for a stroll. Can't really see you, where are you? Well, she decided to hide in there, under the plant, just for now. We'll see how it goes. Oh, how cute she is in her near enclosure. Now for the random fact. Did you know that the Maya used to use this tarantula species in medicine? Yeah, crazy, no? The shaman will take it, sadly will kill it, crush it and mix it with spirit alcohol then strain it with a piece of cloth and treatment was used for an ailment, ailment sorry for an ailment called tarantula weed uh, with symptoms being chest pain coughing and asthma hey, believe it or not this species of tarantula is consider, considered vulnerable to extinction due to illegal removal of its habitat international trade and combined with um, habitat loss so that's a big no-no for the wildcat trade every time you get a new tarantula or any animal that you decide to keep you gotta make sure that the source you're getting it from is reliable and it's captive bred because if we want to keep having this hobby and learning about animals and species and whatnot we need to respect the fact that we're taking them from their habitat endangers the endangers them endangers the planet but now that's it for today guys and thank you very much for coming for watching the, the whole video if you enjoyed the video like and comment something thumbs it up or like i like it horns it up Subscribe, hit the bell button, and I'll see you and I'll see you in the next video next week. Every Wednesday from now on, you're gonna see me here. Make sure to make sure to follow me as well on Instagram and Facebook if you wanna more updates, like constant updates. So I almost forget. If you wanna know more about keeper cards, I'm gonna have a link in the description, and make sure you follow them on Instagram as well. And that's it. See you, compadres. Horns it up!